everyone, I'm Mike Sattel, founder of Sattel Tutoring, and in this lesson, I'm gonna explain what it takes to get a 600 in the SAT math sections. We'll go over things to memorize, ways to strategize, and I'll give you rough estimates of the number of questions you're allowed to get wrong to still get a 600 on that section. Now, just as a reminder, a 600 is a great score. It is above average, it is respectable, it is kind of like the bare minimum goal that you wanna get if you are planning to submit scores to colleges as part of your applications. Not that 500s are bad, but they're average, they're nothing to be excited about. 600 is kind of that first benchmark where you have something that distinguishes your application, so you gotta make sure you hit that mark, and it's not that hard to do. So let's start by looking at some things to memorize on your way to that 600. First and foremost, you need to be able to perform basic algebra. You need to solve for X. That means you need to know how to work with fractions and exponents and radicals. I know some of you hate fractions, but you need to know those rules. I have lessons on these things. I'm not gonna go into them here, but make sure you check out my channel homepage and the links in the descriptions to start learning these things if you are in any way not capable of solving basic equations. Beyond that, we also need to be able to understand function notation, right? This is F of X. This is a very basic way to represent algebra, represent equations equations. You've probably learned it before, but for whatever reason, it's something that starts to make people scared when they see it in questions, and it makes people intimidated, and they quit too soon on things that are actually not that hard. So you have to be comfortable with function notation, be able to recognize when they're giving you points in function notation, and then work with those points on whatever equation they give you. So very important. We are comfortable with f of x and everything like it. Uh, in terms of real, just straight up memorization, we need to know how to work with some very basic equations that I guarantee you will see on every every single SAT. Equations like y equals mx plus b for lines. There are the three quadratic equations, vertex form, standard form, factored form. I have a great lesson on that and you need to be comfortable with all three. Sometimes a question is just about reading the equation and telling them the vertex based on the equation. You also should be comfortable with exponentials and percents, which are very linked together with the open formulas. Again, I have lessons on that. Very easy to learn and to implement. Then for as far as statistics goes, keep it simple. What is mean, median, mode, and range? Those are your basic statistics ideas. It's not everything. But if you just understand these basics, you should be well on your way to a 600. There will be questions that you don't know if, for some of those more advanced topics, but it's okay to skip those as we will see. But let's talk strategy because it's not just a question about like what facts do you know about math. You need to be able to put those facts to use on sometimes very complicated questions. Now, the most important math strategy is plug points into equations. I have a whole lesson on this in my strategy series. It is 100% the best way to think about a lot of the math questions. So you need to be able to implement implement that very quickly and confidently. Also, learn how to use Desmos, the built-in graphing calculator. You can use it obviously to graph things like you would a regular graphing calculator, but it also helps you solve algebra. So I have a lesson on this. It's really helpful, especially if you're not that great of algebra, you might be able to get yourself over the finish line to that 600 just by letting the calculator do a lot of the work for you. So make sure you learn how to use it. It's a very, very powerful tool. As far as geometry goes, I know a lot of people hate geometry, but remember there's a built-in reference chart on every SAT math section that gives you the formulas for area, volume, triangles, things like that. So you basically, if you just know that exists, will be able to get some of the most simple, uh, fundamental geometry questions right. You might have to skip some of the hard stuff, but that's okay if you just want to get a 600. And that's because our big strategy here is don't waste time on hard questions. Some of you just really cannot let go of hard questions and you rush through all the easy and medium stuff to get to those hard ones. You're going to get them wrong. And, and so if, you goal, if your goal eventually is a 700 or above, then you Yes, we will need to tackle those hard questions, but if you're not getting a 600 yet, don't worry about them. Skip them. Guess randomly. You do not have a chance at those if you're getting everything else that comes before it wrong. So we need to master the basics before we can tackle the advanced stuff. And here's another way to think about this. How many wrong can we get in each module to get a 600? Well, first of all, remember, this is an estimate. Read the note. It's just an estimate of what you can probably do based on some, some practice tests and some experiments, but it's a good way to start. The first thing, though, is we need to make sure we are not placed in the easy second module. If we get too many wrong in the first module, they're going to put us in the easy one, and that limits our score to a 600 maximum, even if we get all of the questions right in the easy module. It's very hard to get in the 600s if you're in that easy module. So you've got to make sure you keep your errors to a minimum in the first module. So five is very conservative. If you make five questions wrong, you're still pretty much guaranteed to get in the hard module. But six or seven, it starts to get risky. It might depend on which seven you get wrong, easier questions tend to count more. So 
you got to be careful. You got to make sure you're keeping the errors to a minimum in that first module. In fact, if you really want a 600, I think you've got to keep the errors down to three. And yes, there will be some hard questions near the end of the first module. It's not completely easy. It does have some hard things. But if you ignore those questions and get them all wrong, no big deal. You can still get placed in the hard module and keep your errors to a minimum because you can prevent careless mistakes and other trap answers, things like that on the earlier part of that first module because you'll have time. The first module generally is not that hard to get through. Maybe a couple questions. Again, you just cannot figure out how to solve. That's okay. As long as everything that you are supposed to memorize is memorized, all the strategies are working great, you should be able to get everything else right. Then in the second module, where we know we're going to have a lot harder questions and a lot less time to really focus on them because it's the same amount of time and the same amount of questions, but yes, they are harder, but you can get half the questions wrong and still get a 600 in your math. Now, obviously try to get fewer than 11 wrong, but 11 out of 22 questions and half of them wrong and you can still get a really decent score, right? Above average score is a 600. So just keep that in mind. And, and remember in the math modules, the questions are organized by difficulty. So the easier questions are at the beginning of the module and the harder questions are at the end. So honestly here, just go up to number 15, do one through 15 and make sure that all of those are right. And then just guess randomly for everything after that. That's fine. You can still get a 600 in math that way. So some of you are going to rush through all that stuff at the beginning so that you can spend a ton of time at the stuff at the end. But if you are not consistently in the 600s yet, I'm sorry, but you do not have the math ability to answer a lot of those hard questions. Give up on them. Ignore them. Let just random chance determine whether you get them right or not. Focus on the stuff you can control, the stuff that's at the beginning of that module, questions 1 through 15 are generally easier, maybe slightly harder near the end there, but you'll have the time to focus on those and make sure that you get them right if you are willing to give up on the stuff at the end. This is an important step to get that 600s. You have to be able to quit on things that are too hard for you. So hopefully this is a great place to start. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel. I'm always releasing new lessons about these specific things that I told you to memorize here, some different strategies, so that way you'll never miss a new uh, piece of information. And remember, go to my website, go to my channel homepage for lessons on a lot of the things I talked about here. I'll also put some important links in the description. Once again, I'm Mike Sattel, founder of Sattel Tutoring. Remember, when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less. Sattel for more. Thanks for watching.